A list of the parts needed can be found on the hydraulic arm build guide found on teachergeek.com under documents. For this kit you will need a Teacher Geek reamer, a Teacher Geek multi-cutter, a number 2 Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of safety glasses. You may also want a pair of pliers and a crayon or some wax. Components and free documents for this activity are available at teachergeek.com. The Teacher Geek construction system allows you to build almost any mechanism you can imagine using two simple tools. The dowels and connector strips can be easily cut to size using our Teacher Geek multi-cutter. But don't use the multi-cutter to cut metal because you'll ruin the blade. Most of our Teacher Geek components come with holes that dowels just press into. Just twist the reamer back and forth to ream out a hole. Reaming out a hole will make it so it no longer holds a dowel. So don't ream out holes you want dowels to stay pressed into. Only ream out holes you want dowels to slide or rotate in. To build the cylinders you will need a barrel, a plunger, a piston, some screws, and a packet of silicone. Take the plunger and set it onto the end of the piston. Apply silicone all the way around the plunger. You can put silicone in the barrel if you want, but make sure it's past this line. Then go ahead and put the piston into the barrel, move it up and down a few times to make sure the silicone spreads out. Without silicone, the plunger will stick to the end of the barrel and the piston will pull right off. And finally, add two number six screws into the barrel to keep the piston from coming out. Now we need to cut the tubing for your advanced hydraulic arm. You will need to cut four sections of tubing for this kit. The first section needs to be 100 centimeters, which is about 40 inches. The second section needs to be 70 centimeters, which is about 28 inches. And then you're going to need two sections at 46 centimeters, which is about 18 inches. At this point, you can pause the video and complete the optional fluid power lab. If you would like to continue with the construction of your hydraulic arm, just let the video continue to play. To fill the cylinders and create a hydraulic system, the first thing you need to do is get some water. Take one of your cylinders and place it in the water. Slowly pull up to fill the whole thing with water. Attach the cut tubing to the cylinder filled with water. Push all the water out so it's filling your tubing and not the cylinder. Now take your second cylinder and again slowly pull up and fill it full of water. Attach the tubing full of water to the end of the cylinder that is now full of water. Attach a number 6 screw into the hole aside the cylinder tip. This will keep the tubing from pulling off. Your hydraulic system is finished. When making a hydraulic system that uses a 13 milliliter and 4.5 milliliter cylinder, you always want to fill the 13 milliliter cylinder with water first. Then just follow the previous steps using the smaller cylinder. Then go ahead and fill the 4.5 milliliter syringe. Attach the tubing onto the cylinder and then go ahead and push the water through. Just add the number 6 screws and you're all set. You will need to complete the 4 hydraulic systems listed in the packet for your hydraulic arm.
Your first step is to take the dowel and cut three 50 millimeter sections, which is about two inches a piece. Now place those three dowels in the three corner holes of your hole plate. The easiest way to get them in is to tap them in with a pair of easy cutters. Push or tap a perpendicular block halfway down onto the dowel shown in the picture above. Now push or tap the second plate onto the dowels. Cut two dowels to 60 millimeters, which is about two and three eighths of an inch. Push or tap the dowels into the center of the connector strip. Make sure they're about four holes apart. You can now put the second connector strip on top. Make sure the dowels are in the same hole. Cut a dowel that's 65 millimeters, which is about two and three eighths of an inch, and then slide it into the hole plate. Using the arm you previously made, spread the connector strip slightly apart. Push slash tap each side onto the dowel. Grab the hydraulic system that you made that has 46 centimeters, which is about 18 inches of tubing. Spread the plates apart to place the cylinder inside. The cylinder should extend through the plate holes. Once your cylinder is in place, go ahead and remount the hole shown. Cut a dowel to 60 millimeters, which is about 2 and 3 eighths of an inch, and then slide it through the hole that you just reamed out. Spread the connector strips apart, and then slide the dowel into the holes, then push the connector strips back together. Make sure that your arm moves when you push and pull on the cylinder. Cut a connector strip in half. Since connector strips do not have a center hole, they must be cut as shown in the picture to get two equal length pieces. Take a 1 inch screw and screw it into the connector strip on the hole closest to where you cut. Add a number 10 nut and screw it down, but don't tighten it down, you still need to place it into the slot on the hole plate. Now place another screw into the hole of the connector strip that lines up with the second slot on the hole plate and then attach a number 10 nut and screw it all the way down. Then go ahead and do it on the other side. Once you're done, make sure everything's tight. Cut a dowel to 170 millimeters, which is about six and five eighths of an inch. Now take that dowel and place it into the other end of the connector strips as shown. This will be your base for your hydraulic arm. Place a 1 inch screw through the back of your hole plate. Make sure it's at least 2 holes away from the center. Place the waist of your hydraulic arm onto the base. Then make sure that the 1 inch screw goes through the center of the perpendicular block. Go ahead and screw the screw through the perpendicular block. Now 
Now grab your lock nut and place it on the end of the screw. You can start it with your hand. Using a pair of pliers and a number 2 screwdriver, tighten the lock nut down. Make sure it's not too tight, you need your waist to move freely. Cut two more dowels to 40 millimeters, which is about an inch and 5 eighths. Now just push or tap them into the connector strips as shown above. Then go ahead and add the second connector strip on top. Now take your reamer and clean out the two holes as shown above. Cut another dowel to 60 millimeters, which is about 2 and 3 eighths of an inch. Place that dowel through the holes that you just reamed out, using slide stop on each side to secure it. Make sure the dowel can move freely and don't push the slide stop too close to the connector strip. Spread the connector strips on the main arm apart to insert the forearm you just made, then go ahead and push slash tap the connector strips back together. Go ahead and cut another dowel to 60 millimeters, which again is about 2 and 3 eighths of an inch. Grab the hydraulic system that you made that had the 70 centimeter tubing, which is about 28 inches. Go ahead and remount the hole that is shown above. Now take that dowel you just cut and slide it through the hole that you reamed out. Go ahead and secure it on both sides with some slide stop. Attach the cylinder to the hydraulic arm by connecting the cylinder to the forearm and the dowel to the main arm. Check your arm and make sure that it moves freely when you push and pull on the cylinder. Cut a dowel to 75 millimeters, which is about 3 inches. Then go ahead and place that dowel into the back corner of your base. Using a pair of easy cutters to tap it in will be the easiest way. Place a perpendicular block on top of the dowel. Grab your other hydraulic system that has 46 centimeters of tubing, which is about 18 inches. Then go ahead and remount the hole that is shown above. Attach your cylinder to the base by putting one end into the base and sliding the perpendicular block down to clamp it into place. Slide the 1.5 inch screw through the hole plate as shown above, and then use a number 10 nut to tighten it down. Cut it out to 40 millimeters, which is about 1.5 inches. Push or tap that dowel into the end of a perpendicular block. Add a number 10 nut onto your 1.5 inch screw. Screw your perpendicular block onto the end of your screw. Make sure there's enough room at the end so you can add another hex nut. Place the end of the dowel into the reamed out hole on your cylinder. Then go ahead and add another number 10 nut onto the end. Tighten both of them down so your perpendicular block doesn't move. Make sure that the waist moves freely when you push and pull on your cylinder.
Cut the pins off the other end of the cylinders you have attached to your arm. Using 1 inch screws and hex nuts, go ahead and attach the cylinders together. Cut two dowels to 90 millimeters, which is about three and a half inches. Go ahead and tap both dowels into center holes of perpendicular blocks. Cut two more dowels to 110 millimeters, which is about four and three eighths of an inch. Go ahead and tap both dowels into one perpendicular block. Take the other perpendicular block with the dowel in the center and remount both holes. Slide the perpendicular blocks onto the dowel like shown above. Using your last hydraulic system, Push the dowels into the cylinder. Attach the piston to the dowel. Make sure that the piston is fully touching the dowel and that you use the zip tie to connect the top hole to the dowel. Make sure that your cylinder moves freely when you push and pull on it and then go ahead and trim the end of the zip tie off. Take two perpendicular blocks and put them on the end of the dowel. These will act as your grippers. Trim the end of the connector strip off. Place a 1 inch screw through the bottom hole of your cylinder. Then go ahead and screw it onto the end of the other connector strip. Go ahead and add a number 10 nut on the back to make sure it's secure. Trim the tabs off of the cylinder and attach it to the other ones the same way you did before. Adding rubber bands will help counterbalance the arm due to its weight and hold it in place, otherwise your arms may droop slightly. Your arm is done, now go ahead and play with it. See how well you can control it. Then if it doesn't work for you, try and improve it. Maybe make your own design. See what you can do.